Welcome to Microsoft Unboxed. I'm one of your hosts, Sonia Dara, and I'm joined by my colleague and friend, Colleen O'Brien. Hello, world. Today we have a very special episode of Microsoft Unboxed, and today's theme is... Hacking 101. But before we jump in, remember to subscribe. Just hit that red button right below the video, and every Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific, you'll be notified when we release a new video. So this is a very special episode where John Gottfried will be joining us on the show, who is an expert on all things hacking and hackathons. He's a hacking aficionado. Yeah, and this is to help us kick off our celebration for next week's Microsoft Hackathon, which is the world's largest private hackathon, and it's hosted by The Garage, which is an organization we have here on campus. This year is the sixth annual Microsoft Hackathon, and it's bound to be one of our biggest. Last year's hackathon brought together 23,500 employees. And interns. And they worked on over 5,800 projects. Yep, and people from across how many countries? 75. 75 countries. Yeah. Well done, Microsoft Hackathon. Pretty awesome. So the reason why we have this hackathon and why Satya Nadella, our CEO, had introduced this six years back was to really help us evolve our culture and allow people to step away from their desk jobs and to really focus on some other projects and maybe some ideas people have been thinking about that can really help make a difference. So all of it really stems back to our five cultural pillars that Microsoft has. So one is growth mindset, two, how to be customer obsessed, Three, all things diverse and inclusive. Four, how to promote one Microsoft, so pulling in a lot of different parts of the company together. And five, all about making a difference. So this year there are 16 challenges at the hackathon. Each one is sponsored by an executive here at the company and comes fully loaded on our internal hackathon website with resources and guidance about how to think about your hack. Give me a few examples, okay. or your favorites. A few of my favorites are hack for ethics. I like that. Yeah, you know, we sort of need to take a step back and make sure that AI continues to be for good in our products and how it's manifesting in the world. Yeah. Another one of the challenges that I'm really excited about is hack for LinkedIn. Oh, that's a good one. LinkedIn is, of course, part of the Microsoft family, so they're included in this hackathon as well. And then we have a hack for sustainability. All good topics. All great topics. Nice. So those are a lot of different challenges. I'm getting really excited reading through this list. How are you feeling about this? Good. I mean, I actually have never participated in the hackathon, but I've been every year to take a look at all the projects. There was one, I remember I even got to try it out, is they had a medical bed. And by just using your vision, you were able to dictate where the orientation of the bed would go. Very cool. Yeah. So it sounds like we're both pretty excited for the hackathon next week. But I think we should probably get some tips and tricks first from John. So let's jump to the interview. John, thank you so much for joining us today on the show. We're very excited to have you in the studio. If you don't mind telling our audience a little bit more about yourself and maybe a little bit about your friend. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm excited to be here. I'm the co-founder of Major League Hacking, which is the global community for student developers. So every day, I get to work with really smart young people building, you know, like tomorrow's technology. And Manny here is one of the projects that got built at one of our events and sits in our office as a hack on exhibit. So can you tell a little bit more about what programs they have or how the Hack League works? Yeah, so we work with about 125,000 students a year. So it's a lot of people. There's only about 40,000 CS grads in the US, right? So it's a pretty global organization. We do everything from hackathons to technical workshops where you can learn a specific skill, as well as demo days and community building events for people basically everywhere in the world. We've had events on every continent at this point, including Antarctica. What? That's awesome! John, can you tell us what a hackathon is? Yeah, a hackathon is a weekend-long invention marathon where people come together, come up with a crazy idea, and then build a working version of it in a really short period of time, and then they get to show it off to their friends. It's a really great experience. For us, 
Students are traveling from all over to be part of this. And so you have hundreds or even thousands of people all showing up to the same building and there's a lot of energy. Maybe there's a friend you haven't seen in a while. Maybe there is a company that you're a big fan of that you've never interacted with in person before. And all of the hackathons kick off with an opening ceremony that you know tries to keep that momentum going. So what happens after a hackathon ends? Do people keep working on a project together? Have you made friends afterwards? I hope you've made friends. <laughs> definitely uh, part of the point of the events. Perhaps you've made enemies. <laughs> I hope you have not made enemies. That's a terrible hackathon. <laughs> Typically, we see people leaving the hackathon with a new skill set, maybe some new connections. One of the cool things about it is you don't have to continue working on your project. It de-risks it a lot when you don't have to think about the future implications of what you're building. Occasionally, people do turn their hack projects into products or startups, yeah. but I kind of compare it to a marathon where every Everyone's going at their own pace. Most people are there just to like extend their skills a little bit, you know, do something they didn't think they were capable of, and that's what they get out of it. That's, that's it. What are some great hacks that you've seen, either something you've been part of or just got a demo of from someone else? One of my favorites is this kid, Ben. He comes up to me, he's like, hey, I'm gonna build something crazy this weekend. And then he disappears for 24 hours. And I get to the end and I go up to him and he's just at like an empty folding table. And I was like, what happened? Like, did it not work out? He was like, no, 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 follow me. And so we go out to the parking lot and he like opens the door to this car. Again, the back seat. And it's like starts driving around. And I noticed that the steering wheel had all these like 3D printed gears duct taped to it and that the car was steering itself, and it was absolutely terrifying. I got out as quickly as I could. All of that happened in one weekend. He literally built that in two days. Well done ah, with that demo, good Ben. Good job, Ben. Yeah, very impressive. I could not do that. Our hackathon here at Microsoft is next week. What tips do you have for us to be amazing Please hackers? give us all the tips. Work backwards. So often what I'll do is I'll, I'll think about what is a minimum viable demo to prove my point and then see what goes into that. You need to show off a specific feature or functionality that is a proof of concept for your overall idea and that's what gets people excited about it. Okay, so I have to ask now about Manny. <laughs> yeah, Manny is my nickname for it. It's actually called Alert, and it was built by a handful of UW students to increase safety on campus. And basically how it works is um, this is a motion sensor, and there's a light on the front that will turn on either if there's a nearby report or if someone's behind you. And if you feel unsafe at any time, you can press this little button and it'll like send an alarm. <laughs> which is kind of crazy. And the alarm actually would report back to the app and call your friend. And they ended up winning one of the prize categories at the event. So they won a challenge for making your local community better. That's amazing. Yeah. John, how can any of our viewers get involved with the Major League Hacking community? So one is to attend events. All of our events are free for students to attend and they happen all over the world, all year round. So there's a lot of really cool stuff going on and honestly a lot of opportunities to learn something new and make connections to some really cool people. You can also organize events. Okay. So a lot of our students put on their own workshops or hackathons and that's honestly one of the best ways to become a leader in the community because you're creating those experiences that have been so impactful on you for other people. If you're a professional though, you can actually go mentor at the events or sponsor them if your company is hiring students. And it's a really good opportunity to give back to that next generation. You can go to majorleaguehacking.com and check out our event listing for the upcoming season and also use some of our free resources to learn some new skills. Hackathons seem like a really great way to keep learning and practice risk on a regular basis. Hackathons really are this magical little like bubble. No one's grading you, it doesn't affect your job performance, no one's paying you to be there. The worst case scenario is that your project doesn't work at the end, and yeah. you probably still learn something in the process. I imagine that not all of your experiences have been totally successful. Would you mind getting a little vulnerable here and sharing your most epic fail? My first hackathon, it was an event called Music Hack Day. Okay. And I really wanted to build something that generated mashups. Way more difficult than I expected. And there was a toolkit there that only worked in Python. And so I was sitting there for most of the event trying to like understand how Python worked. And by the end, I was able to like Rube Goldberg together a PHP website and a Python script that 
you know, it generated mashups. And I had never shown off a hack project before. And I had to go up on stage and show off this terrible music I had created. And all of these people came up to me after the demos and were like, I see what you were going for. Like, I like that idea a lot. You know, what are you going to do next? And that was the thing that really got me to, to continue going to those hackathons, was like this community of people that came up and said, hey, I like your idea. And that was it, you know, it didn't really work, but they were into it and that was encouraging. And I think a lot of people share that experience. John, thank you so much for joining us today. It was awesome having you in the studio. I learned a lot around hackathons and how to be a better hacker. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the hackathon next week and I believe we'll be seeing you there, right? And yeah. You're totally gonna be on our team, right? Definitely gonna be on your team, but I cannot wait to see what everyone builds. <laughs> okay, so John, we're going to transition to our next segment, which is called Outside the Box. We have questions submitted from the audience. We have 30 seconds to answer. We haven't seen the questions, you haven't seen the questions. Are you ready? Yeah, okay. I've waited my whole life. Can we please get 30 seconds on the clock? Oh, this is a good one. What's your most embarrassing moment? I would say that one of my most embarrassing moments was doing karaoke in San Francisco, and me and my co-founder Swift were singing Hit Me Baby One More Time. Great song. And they booed us off stage. No! True story. I thought you were gonna say that you split your pants, but getting booed is no, worse. Getting booed off stage is way worse. Do you, <laughs> you wanna singing. ask Colleen a question now? Sure, I'd love to ask you a question. Oh man, I like this one. On the clock. What Hogwarts house are you in and why? I never did the Harry Potter thing. Boo. I think I'm a Hufflepuff. Yeah, you're a Hufflepuff. Okay. Yeah. I could see that. Sonia, what's your favorite dish to make for yourself? Ooh, healthy dish or not healthy dish? Give us one of each. Unhealthy isn't even something I'd cook, it's just a cheese platter. Healthiest is what I made last night, which is usually like salmon and a salad. But if I'm missing home, that's the third qualifier, is I make an Indian dish that my mom makes. So either rasam rice or keema. So delicious. Some of my homies out there. If anyone has any questions for the box, please make sure to submit them to the email address you see here, or you can comment on the video below. And as always, please remember to subscribe, hit that red button right over there, and you will get notified about a new episode every Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific. And we will see you next week at the Microsoft Hackathon. Keep hacking. Yay, yay, thumbs up. <laughs>